analyzing tool uh, so basically uh, everybody is familiar that every computer has a firewall the local firewall and uh, in the last uh, or uh, i do remember in week uh, fifth module uh, i showed you that firewall as well uh, where i blocked one of the website so that is a host based host based uh, windows firewall and uh, you know it is just blocking everything or whatever you have mentioned in that firewall but sometime you need to take a look of uh, those uh, logs as well what is going on what is happening maybe if you are working as a network administrator in your production environment you are running kind of application and you are confused that what is the thing that is stopping that you know that application means why firewall is stopping that so you can use this uh, very good and simple tool which is known as zlan so uh, if you want to download uh, uh, that log file for, for, for your windows firewall this is a path you can go see windows system 32 log files and then firewalls you will get a uh, a notepad kind of uh, file which is mentioned like p firewall dot log file which you can just you know import into this zlan to just take a look which i'm going to show you so just a minute let me start that file can you see the landing page yeah yes yeah so there is not so much going on. You can see it's a blank, but what do you need to do? You need to go edit settings and then under browse, you need to browse that file that I mentioned that I have already uh, copied and pasted into my desktop. So click on that open and click okay. So still there is nothing going on. What do you need to do? File run F5. Just click on uh, either press F5 from the keyboard or just from the file, hit run. So very quickly, it will show you uh, a lot of details, uh, like when that data is arrived, this is all the information. Okay, then we have the time, specific time when that data is, uh, uh, arrived and this is the action and if you remember I performed some action like block that website and that website was blocked so you can take a look of these as well these all things then what kind of protocol that is being allowed or denied you can take a look from here then we have like the source IPs from where uh, this data was uh, sourcing from what was the destination as it is mentioned these are public ips and local ips as well then source port and destination port as well then we have the size which is basically empty then we have some flags tcp sync tcp act these all tcp icmp code and the path information then these are like, you know, these, these things is known as the top talkers. So this is like a brief overview. This is known as the top talkers. What are the top talkers or the application that are in process? Are being used and this is just the GUI. So as you can see from here, uh, the TCP 443 ports, how many packets are being sent from 443, which are 5044. Okay. And we know this is for the secure protocol. Then UDP 53 for the DNS, how many information is being sent 
then these are some other very good information as well. Just a, just a learning tip over here. Um, you see how important it is uh, to learn these protocols like from in the beginning, because if you look at just this one application, there's a lot of data in there, right? And most of the time when you go to the companies, they have something like this implemented. So you're not going to be the first person to implement these things most of the time, right? Because that's why you're getting as a junior level network engineer. So if you didn't know, or you're not confident about what is TCP, what is UDP, what does destination IP means? What does the source IP means? And when you look at these IP addresses, can you differentiate between a private and, an, and a public IP? You see, if you didn't know all this stuff, it would be really hard for you to understand anything in future because that's what you are going to be using in most of these different type of companies. They have something like this and they go by these logs. So I just want you to just bring that memory back to you that why it is so important for you guys to go back if you are not comfortable with or are not confident enough to understand what this protocol means, you should go back and study more about it because then that's where when you see an application like this, I instantly know what it means. So it, it becomes very easy for you to learn things uh, in future. Just a little tip so, so you have that little memory, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Danish. Uh, then we have uh, like source IPs information, top rows by conversation, who person or the IP is communicating most, then this by the protocol. So like they have like divided those into the portion, whatever we have seen here. Then this is like GUI, whatever is mentioning here, uh, they are showing in graphical, the possibility is like your, maybe your boss want to know uh, what is the protocol or application that is being used most of the time in our uh, networking. So what you can do, you just can take a, picture of this uh, thing and you can show the TCP is the application that is being used most in our environment. Then we have some kind of protocol like we have TCP, UDP, uh, but some like it's mentioned too, if you are confused what that thing is, what you can do, you can click this uh, thing in the blue in the bottom. And then you can come under the pros protocols, yeah. So if you are confused what that two thing is, you can correlate it with this one, which is, which is IGMP, stand for Internet Group Management Protocol. So there is a list of uh, the protocols. You can go through what these things are and okay. So another uh, part uh, which uh, uh, let's uh, show you very quickly, uh, which I'm talking about the Splunk. So what Splunk is, Splunk is also very similar like this Zland, but this is a lot like it is having uh, a plethora of information inside it you can play with. So Splunk is used for monitoring and searching through big data. So if you have like for in this ZLAN case, you have, you know, a very bunch of data, but in case of Splunk, you might have, as mentioned, the big data, like in a GBs. So you can do indexing, correlate information in that container, uh, make it searchable and make it possible to generate alerts, reports and vi visualization. So everything is possible in a Splunk. So very quickly, I will show you how it looks like. So this is like, uh, you know, web-based application, but you need to install it on your uh, own device. And uh, this is how you are gonna access, this, access it using 127, which is uh, your own IP with the 8,000 as a port. So you need to enter your uh, credentials here and click sign in. Actually, it is, uh, you know, running uh, very slow uh, because I have some issues. If I can click on this message, if you have any kind of issues, it will mention here. It's saying that minimum free disk space is this. 
reached by C program means uh, if I can show you my computer and you will see everything is flooded. So that is the reason uh, this uh, application is uh, very slow. If I will remove some files from that, then it will work very fast. So this is how it will look like. We have apps here. It has multiple apps. It will just not do search and reporting or uh, monitoring and analysis. If you click on this find more apps, just click on that. So as you can see, there is a plethora of uh, uh, applications you can install like IT operations related category, security and fraud compliance, business analytics, utilities, IoT related DevOps. There are so many things. For example, if you just click on IoT related industry. So these are the add-ons you need to install in this application that will work and you can uh, play with this, uh, this application. So to go back, just click on this Plunk Enterprise. Then uh, now these are the few tags. I just you know, walk you through about these things very quickly because this is very advanced. If you want uh, self-paced study, you can go through and you can dig deep about uh, this application, Splunk, what it does. Uh, so this is administrator tag. You want to change some kind of preferences. For example, you want to change the look and feel. For example, if I go preferences in a global setting, uh, you can change the time zone as per your location. Then we have a default application that is home. For example, if some person is uh, so much into Python kind of thing or monitoring console of things, they can select monitor console and apply these settings. After that, if you will go onto that dashboard, you will see the dashboard is uh, flooded with this monitoring kind of things like Splunk Enterprise Server, this Windows, this GP physical memory. So once you will enter into this, uh, this will be the landing page. Like you can change the landing page. Uh, further, for example, what I like, I just keep it, for example, this search and reporting. Apply this one. And then click on this Splunk icon. Now you can see uh, the look and feel has been changed. So you can just click, uh, quickly uh, whatever you want to search uh, about the logs, monitoring to uh, something like that, uh, you can do it from here. Then we have under settings, we have knowledge base, database, uh, systems, user and authentications, uh, any roles or users you can create from here, any kind of licensing thing you can do from here any kind of like data inputs you can do from here or any kind of like events, tags, fields, all the information you can get from this one. Uh, this is the same monitoring console that I showed you earlier. If I click on that one. So this is the same, uh, it will show how much data the uh, disk, disk size has been utilized uh, what, what are the concurrent uh, searches? Uh, what is the CPU usage uh, being used by this Splunk memory usage and so many things. Then under settings, if you go to this add data, this is the most important part. If you click on this one, So these are the three most important tasks here. Most of the time being used is upload. Then we have monitor and forward as well. This is just like uh, uh, the Danish talked about uh, the agents. So you can install the forward into the host machines as well. That will 
basically generate the logs and we will be sent to this Splunk machine. So this is the uh, files from my computer. If I click on the upload, Uh, this, so this is a select source. Like in case of ZLAN, what we did, we uploaded the file, which is pfsense.log uh, file. So the same thing you can do from here. You can like select this, for example, this uh, any access log file, and then uh, you can click next. I will not gonna do because I know uh, I did it and it stuck because, uh, because of the, this uh, size, I'm uh, having issues. Uh, so you can upload, then it will select the source type, input settings, review, and done. Once you are done, you will see the same kind of things like we have seen here, like, like this. Okay, but a lot in detail. Here, the problem is you cannot do indexing, you cannot search, you cannot merge two fields, okay? So in uh, Splunk, basically, this is just like a relational database system. If you are familiar with, you just can merge two uh, things together just to uh, make it one. So you can take a decision on the basis of two items. Okay, so that's it. I think this is enough uh, for Splunk. And I just gave you a very flyby overview. Further, if you are interested in it, you just can go and download. Uh, Splunk Enterprise Edition. This is like, uh, you know, uh, a few megabytes of size, uh, file size, and uh, you can run on uh, your Windows machine. And another tip that I want to add is consider this to be like one of those tools that impresses other people to pick up, pick your resume. If you put Splunk in there, trust me, you are going to be taken a little serious than a person who just says, I have done my CCNA, right? Or I have done my any other security plus certification. A lot of people go into a lot of details about Splunk when you go into security side. This is where it's being used heavily. But Splunk is also used for, by network engineers to do some of that, you know, ASA logs or stuff like that. Um, they do use that. So if you want to be out there, if you want someone to really you know, you want to grab their attention, then this is one of the keywords in your resume that will make a big difference. Splunk in itself have titles with some of the big companies. You can make over 80K right now in the US if you are a very good Splunk administrator. Just, they're going to call you Splunk administrator. You can search it now on indeed.com. Yeah. It has 15,000 tags on that, just that word, 15,000. That's a lot of keyword, uh, key attachment. So if you just type Splunk, there's 15,000 jobs. Most of the jobs are security and some of the jobs are more of like a little higher level like sysadmins or network engineer jobs. So you can see the benefit of this application just like you guys have used Active Directory Office 365 for the help desk jobs. This is exactly the same concept using some type of tool that I know, managers know, directors know, and they'll respect you because now you have something little a little high level skill that, that a lot of people don't know about it or they'll need to learn about it when they start working. Yeah, thank you, Danish.